Welcome to the Solar Coaster, a renewable energy theme talk show right here in lovely Maui County. Here we go, gentlemen. Let's have some fun and let's get the information out there, okay? Three, two, one. Aloha and welcome to the Solar Coaster show here in Maui, Hawaii. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, our first show post uh, wildfire and we're leading up to the RE Plus time frame uh, and we're very excited to have two great guests on. We've got David Sellers here from Hawaii Off Grid Architecture and Engineering. Aloha, David. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good. Thank you. Pleasure to have you on uh, the Solar Coaster. And we have Eric Carlson. Eric reached out uh, recently. We were talking on LinkedIn. Eric Carlson is one of the co-founders of Revolusun, which is one of the kind of big dog installers, in a sense, out here in Hawaii. Uh, great to finally connect with you, Eric, and, and have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. I appreciate it. All right. So it's our pleasure. So, gentlemen, we got a um, kind of an amazing story that we initially started to connect on and that's specific to this um and, and i may not have the exact language to to frame it but really is specific to this temporary housing um uh village in a sense that's being erected over by king's cathedral in maui and i want to talk all about that and i want to understand how that formed and i want to understand what's going on with the uh the renewable energy industry and the disaster response for the maui wildfires but before we get there in case people might not know each of you why don't we start out with a little intro uh eric why don't you uh, give us a, a brief overview of who you are and your organization and what's going on in your world yeah so uh, i'm uh, co-founder um, of Revolution Smart Home. We are a locally owned and operated solar installer. Um, we also have an HVAC division and a wide variety of smart home products. Uh, we were founded in 2009, um, and uh, we have amassed, uh, you know, a, a, a client list of of 10,000 residential. Uh, solar plus storage systems and hundreds of large commercial and industrial uh, solar clients as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we are, we're, we're just uh, all about accelerating solar uh, plus storage here on Oahu and bringing that lessons learned to all the people that we interact with um, on shows like yours and on the mainland. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Welcome to Solar Coaster. And uh, I'll tell you what, I live that same world that that you do in many ways and and having had an installation business and then now working in this space and, and just testing and getting all the technology in the home and learning about how it's so amazing, the autonomy and the resiliency that that this technology provides to our lives it just changes the way we live. You know, it's pretty remarkable. So I could probably talk to you for hours about that. Let's jump over to uh, David. David, who are you, sir? Tell us about, and by the way, I, I, I've been, I've been in your home. So like, I know who you are, but tell everybody else who you are. Uh, yeah. So my name is David Sellers. Uh, I'm an architect here on Maui. Um, and I am the principal architect of Hawaii off grid architecture and engineering. We are a multidisciplinary architecture and engineering firm. And in 2020, uh, we were the first architecture firm to commit to all new buildings that we designed to being net zero at a minimum. We yeah. prefer off-grid and we're shooting for carbon positive. So that, that's our goal. Um, my background is as a mechanic, and that turned me into a um, ship's engineer in, in Alaska on commercial fishing boats. That's how I worked my way through undergrad uh, of architecture school, and that's how I got into off-grid. Like I started to understand what generators and water systems and how all that stuff worked, and, and I thought, well, I'm just going to put this into houses and, and buildings, and 20-some-odd um, years later, uh, we're actually doing it. So... Um, we're the largest architecture firm on Maui and, um, you know, we've, we've just been real fortunate that we have like-minded people, um, and we have a philosophy and an understanding of what's going on in the world and, you know, 30 to 40% of all the carbon that's released every day comes from buildings, mm. you know, another 20% from transportation, another 11 or 12% from construction and construction materials. So as an architect, as an urban planner, um, you know, 
up to 50% of the carbon produced every day. We've got some responsibility for that. And that's heavy. You know, there's something that we can do about it. And I think that the world that we're living in now, we've been looking into the future and saying, oh, this climate change things, it's going to be bad. You know, it's going to, it's going to be tough. There's going to be problems. Uh, and now we're there, you know, we're right, we're right there. It's, it's undeniable. So our whole thing is we're going to take a swing at the low hanging fruit. You know, uh, we really love the idea of, you know, fantastic, you know, materials and, and low VOCs and, and, you know, adhesives that, that are earth friendly and things like that. But the real problem right now is, uh, it, is the amount of carbon and we have to stop that immediately. And the good thing about it, and, you know, Eric is a, is a prime example of this, it is changing economics too. It's creating small businesses, turning them into big businesses and creating good paying jobs, you know? So at the same time that the, it's such a crazy time in the world and it's only gonna get crazier, we have this positive thing to look to and that's that's what's been keeping me going lately and having partners in this project that we're going to talk about like eric is just uh it's just amazing but at the same time it's a lot of work to do so yeah thank you for that yeah i i couldn't agree with you more and um i personally am very excited about the opportunity to uh i kind of just this this change in the way we live in our homes based on an abundant amount of energy and then a reduced kind of cons consumption of how we, how we use that energy, the ability to store energy, the ability to use it for transportation. You know, I myself live on catchment. Uh, I've seen one of your homes out in, um, in Haiku. I went to that, um, that event for the uh, Graham Hills house uh, th that you designed really fascinating. was very excited when I talked with him about some of the ideas. Uh, one of the things that grabbed me that I hadn't heard before, you know, in this space, and he was talking about, trying to get that it was like construction it was like carbon per unit used or something like this a very interesting metric that had never really come up in my discussions prior and i thought geez that's a really cool way to look at it you know so it was about creating a very functional space that's used and then it's full life cycle you can say hey on a, on a amount of carbon kind of contributed uh, this is a more efficient approach or a more sustainable approach. And I thought that was awesome. So kudos to you for those kinds of great projects. Uh, and and thank you again, uh, both again for coming in, especially during this time where I think, I don't know how you guys are feeling. I mean, you're in Maui with me, David, and Eric, you're in Oahu right now, uh, as I understand it. And uh, But I, I can just tell you from talking with friends and family, those that have been directly impacted by the fires, those that are experiencing some of the challenges related to the economy, um, there's a kind of a malay or something. There's a fog at the moment in a lot of our minds. So I could, you know, I appreciate you coming on in the midst of maybe you're experiencing something similar is I want to ask this question though, is everybody in your immediate family? Okay. Are you guys okay? Are you in a place where you're, especially David, cause you're here. I know, but Eric too, are you guys okay? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, our revolution is a, a hundred and, 87 uh talented men and women a lot of them from born and raised here and so we did have some of our team members that had friends and family that were personally affected um so it's heavy um but you know we had a meeting we had a we had a, a gathering yesterday acknowledging some of our employees that have been hit that 10 years with us mark um yeah. and we're kind of talking about uh the company and and you know obviously the people that make the company and and how he and we we're talking about the the recent devastation in Maui and and that heaviness that is is apparent and um there is a little bit of uh you know spark in just in the fact that like we know we have um the ability to accelerate and deploy um some solutions for those affected like real you know who lost everything and this project that we'll talk about is one of them it's an amazing project um but you know and it's our people that that even though some of them are suffering they're still showing up and um and operating the way they do that that allows us 
you know, the way that they operate with our vendors and the way they do business and the way that they are allows us to ask for donations and mm. and for favors that are going to help fund what David has put together. Um, so yeah, it's really heavy. We feel it internally in our in our company, but you know, at the same time, it's projects like like this one that that David has put together that that kind of keep us focused um on and, and trying to provide provide solutions, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I guess that's a great tee up for the project, right? So um David, I I came across this. I drove through the through Kahului the other day. You know, I was uh and we're engaged in a lot of different things here, whether it's clean up in Kula or getting a generator out to a friend in West Maui or, or donating stuff or all kinds of different things. Right. But I was driving out, um, across Derry road, King's cathedral. And I saw the, I think it's pronounced continest. Did I say it correctly? Continest. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, the, and I said, Whoa, that's amazing. Take a picture. And then when I saw it came back and saw it on LinkedIn, everyone was talking about it. So, uh, and I saw your renderings. Uh, so obviously when I, when you think about this, um, natural disaster or this disaster, uh, in my mind, I think a lot about how things have happened and how we got to this point in time. I think about the relationship with the utility and the local governments. My mind is occupied in that space pretty heavily. I think about our renewable energy revolution and uh, could, did it have to go this way? And then, you know, where do we go for where do we go forward is a big thought process for for me personally. Uh, there, and there's stuff that happened during the day, during the actual time period of the disasters. We're not going to delve into too much of that, but we have this kind of short-term housing solution. A lot of the people at this moment in time are in the hotels uh, around uh, uh, Maui. There's, I think, about 19 hotels uh, that are being used. There's Airbnbs being used, but then there's going to be this midterm housing solution. I assume this is really where that's going to, um, this is going to play a significant role in that. And 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 so it is really inspiring. So I want to hear about how this project got off the ground, David, what your vision is for it. Give us a sense of of what this is all about. It looks to me like a temporary housing off-grid solution, t tiny home village right in the center of, of Maui, essentially. But what, why don't we put, I don't want to take your word, so you go for it. Sure, yeah. Um, so to kind of get the, the nexus of everything and the genesis, um, we've been working with Family Life Center uh, for... I inherited it from my partner that's retired. And so for about 17 years, uh, they're a local nonprofit. They have the homeless shelter in Kahului. Um, and so we've done just basic general, you know, build outs, tenant improvements, uh, renovations, additions to add on to the homeless shelter to provide transitional housing. And we've just been really proud of the work that they do. And, and been proud that we've been successful and we've got clients that support us and allow us the bandwidth to be able to provide that pro bono service. So um, when everything happened, uh, you know, it, obviously the the day after the that day, a couple of days after that, we had a, a couple of our staff and, and their extended family and and um, that you know we couldn't we couldn't get in contact with. Uh, so it's pretty it's pretty you know. It's 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 kind of like 9-11, you know, and, and but a little bit yeah. closer. That's what I what I keep thinking back to. Same here. Um, and you know, everybody wanted to do something. And uh and so phones started ringing. I'm also the um president elect of our local AIA chapter, so the American Institute of Architects Maui chapter. Uh, and so the national branch reached out, the state, and we started going through disaster recovery training. Uh, so I got certified as a safety assessment uh, inspector for structures that are damaged, uh, but I also just started learning about what happens in these situations from colleagues in California and Colorado yeah. um, you know, that have been through recent wildfires, as well as folks from the East Coast that have been through hurricanes. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm pretty much an optimist, you know, we, we, we do design build stuff. So in construction, you have to kind of be a little bit of a naive optimist because if you weren't, you wouldn't do this. Like mm -hmm. obviously everything is going to be cheaper and take less time than it actually does. And if, if we knew what it actually was, we'd never do it. Um, so, you know, we're like, okay, we're going to get back in there. We're going to help these folks. We're going to, we're going to do pro bono work. We're going to, we're going to design these houses. We're going to work on the schools that we were working on. We're going to fix it all up. And, couple of years, it's all going to be great. It's not the reality. 
you know, we're looking at the statistics that uh, we're looking at is five years, 25% rebuild. Yeah. That's sobering, you know, that's sobering. When you go to Lahaina and you see what's happened and you see the people, you talk to them, you smell like it's, you know, it, we never see anything like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a little bitty community in a sense, you know, it's like, this is, this is unprecedented for us and, and even for, for the United States in the last hundred years. So, um, so all this is going on, lots of emotions. We're wanting to do something. We start getting calls and of course, Family Life Center. And we had been looking at this specific site for, you know, eight months ago for um, some little, really small, these things called pallet homes. So like, I don't know, like, 100 square feet or less like 80 square feet and meant to be kind of first phase of getting someone in a house getting them off the street uh so they had an opportunity to lease this piece of land and i and we looked at it it's just not a good piece of land you know there's no water there's no there's no electricity it's back, no access uh it's right in the middle of town it's very visible um and then all this happened and of course first conversation I have with Family Life Center, like we're, we're doing something and we're going to do it on that land and we're going to execute that lease. And we got permission from the, from the mayor's office and they want us to do it. And it's just like, okay, let's do it. Like it, it, it's not ideal, but none of this is ideal. The situation is not ideal. So what's the best solution that we can come up with? And for our staff, they, everyone was just wanting to do something. There was so much, emotion after the you know the initial stress kind of wore off of being able to find family and friends it was like what can we do you know um and so we just poured ourselves into starting to work and they said oh hey we found this solution it's in hungary it's been deployed in ukraine and in africa and it folds up and it's like a 20-foot shipping container but it's insulated and it has doors and windows and and it pops up in 10 minutes and it's, it's perfect. Uh, I was like, okay, but it's in Hungary. Like that doesn't help us, you know, yeah. we just need to build something here. Let's motivate all of our local contractors and we'll just start, you know, fabbing up tiny homes or something to, th to that effect. And, uh, and they said, Hey, NATO is, has offered to fly these things over here. Wow. And, you know, part of me and my brain's like oh that can't be a good use of carbon uh, but you know at the same time I'm like you know I'm thinking about like all the carbon that's released when Lahaina burns you know like in this and it's just the cyclicalness of it so um you know when they said that and I said okay this might be real we'll start to work on it um but when it gets loaded on the plane, let me know. And that's when things are going to get serious. And then I got a text with these things getting loaded on a C-17. And so it was just around the clock from that point on. Um, so we spent about six days almost just working in shifts, trying to figure things out. We're still we're still figuring them out, but it's not as, as heavy as it was previously. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, everybody's, you know, the bright side of things is people started to come out and people's character has started to become very, very evident. Um, so people like Eric, um, you know, who stepped forward and just like, without a question, it's just like, these are our values. Uh, these are the values of the industry that we're in. And this is how we're going to help our community. Mm. No questions, you know, and, and that for me, like, as, as far as it's been to like try to deal with this and try to try to think about what the next 10 to 20 years look like for our, our small community, it's it's getting to meet people like Eric uh, and others that are, are stepping forward and showing their true character. I would say at the same time, we're seeing the opposite for some folks, uh, you know, that are trying to profiteer, mm -hmm. um, you know, not helping, being obstructionist. And so it's a really really interesting, really interesting time in my professional and personal life, like seeing and meeting and making new friends and building these new relationships. Most of them are super positive and it gives me hope for the future. Um, and this, this village, uh, and that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be a village and it's meant to be something that yes, it's short, it's temporary. Uh, it's happening fast. It's not perfect, 
but it represents what things should be. So when we talk about how we use resources, when we talk about how we use water, we're, we're implementing gray water uh, and we're, we're off grid. Uh, you know, this is a, a 10 acre parcel. Uh, I did get a call when we first got started. And, and as I mentioned before, so every new building that we work on, we, we require it from our clients to be net zero at a minimum. And that's because trying to work on older buildings that are already built, that's a heavy lift. If I can't rotate the building to make it work with the sun and the wind, it's hard. If I can't change the plumbing vents to get a good size solar array, it's difficult, you know? So we apply that to all of our new buildings and that's not necessarily something that I had gone through that process with the Family Life Center. So they called me on Friday after the plane's getting loaded and we're working feverishly. And they said, hey, Nico just called and want to know where, we, where, where you want them to put the meter. And uh, I, I, I texted back and I, I said, well, do you want my honest answer of where I want them to put the meter? And uh, I said, it's not needed and we don't have the money and the time to deal with it. Because now think about trying to get electricity out to 150 houses that are only going to be there for two, three years max. That's, you know, they want a meter on every dwelling. You know, what does that service look like? How many drops does that look like? Uh, you know, and, and, and Eric and Rev. Luson stepped forward and said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to power this stuff. And we're just like, yes, this is, this is perfect. So now we're going to have people that are trying to recover and think about the future and rebuilding and what that looks like. And we're going to put them in a place that's not emitting carbon, that's being efficient on their water use. We're going to be greening the landscape around them with their, you know, gray water, which is wastewater. And they're going to have air conditioning uh, and it's all powered by the sun, right? So this is going to show them what things should be. And this is going to show everybody what things should be in the future. And it's, and it's not about, you know, this, this utopia vision. It's about doing the right thing and the values that we have, uh, you know, as, as the citizens of Hawaii to be that first to 2045, hundred percent renewable. Uh, you know, the values of, of taking care of the land, you know, and, and that's what we're, we're being able to show in a quick way. It's like a sketch of the future. This is what the future looks like. You're preaching to the choir, my friend. There is some amazing uh, tidbits in that discussion. Uh, and I want to, I I'm, I'm trying to keep myself from jumping into this, into this and just, you know, being excited, showing my enthusiasm for what you're talking about, because it's something that I wanted to see for so long. Um, but what I heard here was just in terms of the sheer, um, let's call it specs, right? Just in terms of the scale of what's happening. I heard 150 units. So we're talking, is that, is that what we're shooting for here in this 10 acre piece on dairy? And what is that veterans highway? Is that the, the corner we're on? Yeah. Yeah, Pune and intersection there. Yeah, so 150 units total dwelling units is roughly minus one or two. Um, and so Family Life Center is what they are, the Family Life Center. And over the years, the, the, the homeless shelter has transitioned to being more about housing families, mm -hmm. mothers with children. Uh, and they're going to continue that. So it's about housing families. So these continent units are like 20 foot shipping containers, but you can put them together and remove the partition wall so you have a big 16 by 20 foot space mm -hmm. so the, the the strategy is we're going to put double units together for families of four or more mm -hmm. and then for single units uh there will be you know either uh parents and one child or for kapuna for elderly residents that are maybe you know live alone and then we're we're fabricating uh, offsite just just down the road at the Central Maui Base Yard, uh, working with Trust Systems of Hawaii and HPM to fabricate these like they're, they're sheds basically, but they're a, a single bathroom and a, and a sort of micro kitchen. I see. Uh, and those will be you know kind of sistered up adjacent to the living pod that's air conditioned, and then connecting them will be a, a lanai that's screened in. So. That also plays to a little bit of our sort of lifestyle here in Hawaii. We have a lot of outdoor space. We also have a lot of toys. So you got a screen lanai where you can keep your, you know, your surfboard, your boogie board, your, you know, uh, 
like your spear gun, you know, all your stuff for outside. You've got an outdoor space too. Uh, so it's meant to be like a home. It's not going to be a replacement. It's meant to be temporary, but we're trying to make people as comfortable as possible and provide those, those spaces that they actually really need to feel that and to start to recover. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I could easily get into the discussion of land management and living in a way that's consistent with Hawaiian values. These are the things that inspire us all. I think if we live here, we think about Ahupua'a, the ancient land management principles of the Hawaiian culture. Uh, and then that ties into the industry in many respects, I think, you know, Eric and, and, and David, I, 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 I've, but when I, I heard you say gray water, I'm a huge gray water enthusiast, right? And you, I heard you say uh, uh, off, you know, off grid, of course, and then the complexity of trying to do 150 electric meter drops, like, for, you know, that would be so difficult. Um, so what type of a, let's, I mean, we can break this into, I guess, water, septic and energy. If you want to talk specs and we are kind of a spec show in some ways. So uh, what type of uh, gray water systems are you thinking about? Are you working towards it, it deploying? Uh, are they self-contained units like Hydroloop out of the Netherlands? Are they a unique, uh, just a system that you're working with directly here, uh, intersecting the water flow from to the septic? What's your game plan? Yeah, so so keeping it really simple because we need to uh, to be effective and efficient. Um, we're just basically using uh, you know subsurface drip irrigation. Um, you know, basically taking all the water that's not from the kitchen sink and the toilet. So your shower, your laboratory sink, uh, and that's all going to go to subsurface drip irrigation. So we're just following the Department of the State of Hawaii Department of Health gray water guidelines or handbook so just just using that and just keeping it simple wherever we can it's gravity fed basically it just just get, comes out of the, the dwelling separately and it, it goes into a small holding tank where it either gets pumped out or gravity flows out if it if there's an issue the overflow goes into the black water so then it gotcha. goes into the soup gotcha. system so yeah, gray water, man. There's so much in that. Uh, and then move. Uh, how about these energy systems, Eric? What's the uh, game plan? What's the text that's being specced? How's it coming together? Uh, you this you have a unique opportunity here, right? Because you have generation storage, but you also have multiple units happening simultaneously. So I wonder what what you what what the overall approach is. Well, yeah. So uh, I should have. You know, I know, I know you guys are techies, both of you. <laughs> and uh, I think my, my strength is just building is, is getting awareness out oh, about yeah. this project and helping support the show and David and the industry. And so um, from what I, from what I understand, you know, I think, and, and things keep changing the first time, you know, David mentioned it's, you know, they've been, they were working around the clock. Um, yeah. We said, yes, once we heard, we're like, yeah, we'll do whatever we can to support. And the first sketch has changed dramatically. It's it's evolved and continues to improve. But I think um, you know each of these units, um, and I'll go back one step because I'm gonna pat David's back because I know he won't do it. But like, I really have to like focus on the amount of of care and thought that went into this master plan. It's when I I look at it, it's um, it's not just a bunch of boxes put together. I mean, the layout, the, the private, you know, um, enclosed area, the kitchen and bath, the way that they're set up with larger gathering spaces in between each one of these oh, yeah. phases, it's just so well thought out. And I think that's really important for the community to understand is that, there's a lot of heart and soul that went into this project by David and his team. And, um, and, and you'll see it when it's, when it comes to fruition, but um, I just wanted to, to really, uh, to, to give a shout out to Dave there and his team. Um, but uh, back to, back to powering this, these, these units, um, they're each going to be individual. It's going to be, I think it's uh, Dave, unless it's changed, but it's around seven kilowatts per unit with a power wall. Um, we also had, uh, like David mentioned, they're gonna have air conditioning. We're providing the air conditioning units as well. So each unit will have a mini split that was graciously donated to us 
um, the entire project uh, we were, was graciously donated to us and we'll talk and Revolution will be talking in depth about all the partners that have helped make this happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're powering, you know, uh, the units 7K dub per per uh, unit um, with a power wall um, and a mini split unit for each one of those. So in aggregate, I think we're somewhere in the 750K uh, KW uh, size for the total project. So it's not a small undertaking, but, um, you know, we're going to make it happen. <laughs> that is a 750K dub. Whoa, that's big. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of energy being generated there. And we're talking about basically, are we using power walls? Is that what's going in? Correct. Power walls. Right. Yes. Right. Interesting. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to keep my geek hat off on because I really want to start to theorize about how this might work. <laughs> but uh, that's that's phenomenal. And it's so wonderful to think that the industry came together uh, to 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 deploy not only talents, and, and, but and technology and capital and in, 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 in such a, a fast, a rapid time frame, because we're just coming up. I, I, I would think that that, and I happen to know some people in the hotel industry, and I know that they're all liaising right now, the Red Cross and FEMA funding the hotel uh, uh, and the Airbnb world of thousands, right? And uh, the numbers escape me at the moment, but so we're reaching over into that period soon where we start to get into the temporary uh, housing in, in contrast with maybe the hotels, right? So this seems to be moving very quickly. What's the timeline of the project? How do you see it fitting in? Where, uh, when will people be moving in, for example? Do you have a sense of that? Not to hold you to any dates, I'm just trying to get a sense of where it fits in scheduling wise. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's fluid and it keeps uh, changing. Uh, you know, I, this is a text from about an, uh, 45 minutes ago and the first footings are being poured. So that's the wow. reinforcing. Awesome. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So the idea is that we'll have the first unit set on the foundations uh, by uh, tomorrow and then Saturday we'll all be pouring over it. You know, Bravo. I'll have the plumbing installed Bravo. and then plumbing will be pre-installed and then electrical and everything. Uh, we'll still have the walls open for the shed and that's going to be kind of where we direct all the utilities and power. Yep. And then we'll branch off of that to provide power to the container, which is already pre-wired with a yep. um, little, little load center and some lights and receptacles. And then also the, uh, the air conditioning unit uh, that Eric was mentioning. Um, so that's kind of the plan right now, but we're really shooting to have people in there by the end of the first week of September. First you know, week. Oh, that's right around yeah. the corner. I mean, it's next, next week. It's pretty much next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that, that's the target. It's, it's moving. It's, it's fluid, but, um, you know, that's what we're shooting for. And, um, if we're off a little bit, you know, it, it, that's okay. Uh, we're on track and we're keeping the momentum going um and so and, and maybe to just give you a little bit of idea too and thank you eric i appreciate the kind words but you know the the design or the, the thought that went into it was taking our our culture and rethinking how we design neighborhoods and thinking more like a village which seems more appropriate for hawaii right so it's a, it's part of our our, our host culture the hawaiian culture that's so important to all of us especially those like myself that you know, uh, we're, we're a guest here. And so we're showing respect to that, but we're also here because we respect that. Um, and we want to propel that. So the idea was we're thinking about families, we're thinking about dealing with the, the trauma from what happened. And, you know, and we're hearing, and we're still hearing these things and we're reconnecting with friends and we're hearing these stories and, you know, people are concerned about fire. So we have a minimum fire separation of, of 10 feet from every single structure. For five feet around every structure is going to be gravel, non-combustible, right? So no plants, no, you know, no, you know, just trying to use the best fire uh, sort of prevention standards that there are, because that's where we need to be thinking as well, beyond the water and the energy. But the big thing is that we have a small cluster, sort of like a micro village within a larger village where 
Um, we have originally it was designed to be the powerhouse. We're going to have two shipping and two 20 foot shipping containers with a, a you know prefab truss roof over it, and we're going to just smash it with solar panels. Uh, you know, as we started to get into it, we're like, okay, what does that mean? Let's group a maximum of 10, 10 dwellings around one of these community centers. So we're calling it the community hallway. So it's a big open space. Uh, you know, 400 square feet of open space and then 200 square feet uh, of utilities, mechanical, and then another 200 square feet of um, kind of a flex space uh, that they can use for whatever they want. Uh, but then the idea was that's where we have a centralized energy system, centralized hot water, and then we distribute it to a cluster of dwellings. And that would be kind of like their little community center, their living room. So if they didn't want to be in their small individual dwelling, they wanted to to, to be with their community, to be able to have a meal. So there'll be picnic tables and things like that. There'll also be a laundry facility. So uh, that's important as well. And so also just taking all that knowledge that we have about off-grid living and then also really being conscious of we're introducing people to off-grid living, you know? So you, you, you can't leave your refrigerator door open and your air conditioning on all day and then, you know, leave a, a, a pot of stew on for three days. You got to be a little bit conscious. That's why I'm excited about the power walls and the, the, the app, you know, like teaching people, getting them engaged in it, getting that to be part of their everyday life, understanding what their energy looks like, you know, having those conversations like, hey, you've got a flat array uh, and it's dusty here. We're going to have to maintain that. So every couple months, we need to wash that thing off. And then you're going to see, oh, wow, look at the power spike or, you know, the clouds come by. And they say, oh, look at the solar drop, you know. So they start to think about, you know, what we think about in this industry and what we see uh, is really exciting to me. And what's, what's, what's really nice, and Eric mentioned it's fluid. So once we looked at that powerhouse or this, the community holiday, we're like, hey, we're not going to have enough power. We just don't have enough real estate for you know enough pv to really make sure we're doing this correctly we can't screw this up too you know if we can't make the power work then we got a big problem so that you know the the the, the um, 700 kw uh you know or so of pv it does seem like it's a lot but we also want to make sure it's right so that's so killer that eric and his crew came up with that um donation um so now we have solar panel on every single dwelling with a power wall, so they're independent. And the idea, we're working through it, um, and, and I'm good friends with uh, with Hans Harder, aka Hans Solar, uh, which is uh, Revolut Sun's, I uh, think, one of his their lead electricians and masterminds behind solar stuff. Um, and so we're working on how all that works, and the idea, hopefully, what we're going to be able to to work out with the with the first test units are. That central halle, the community halle, where the big bigger energy system is, that's going to have a laundry facility and hot water. It'll be able to back up, hopefully, the power wall. So if there is an issue, we'll have a redundancy of power. There will be a, a generator on site that'll be remote. That's also going to power a firefighting pump. So we're going to have a water tank, and we're going to have firefighting abilities at each community halle, as well as every single dwelling for the combustible portions. The, the prefabricated shed, which will be two by four construction with hardy panel, which is not combustible, metal roof, which is not combustible, but we will have um, uh, sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a sprinkler system, but it's a residential sprinkler system. It's also not been used in Hawaii because it's a newer technology that uses PEX, so it lowers the cost of it. Oh, so Ray Michaels from, from Maui Plumbing, which we work with all the time on all of our fire suppression because Working off grid, we're typically way far away from a fire hydrant. Uh, and also sprinkler systems just really work well for life safety. Uh, they really help you out, right? So we're going to be installing those. That's going to be part of the education component of this, which is going to like be an interior sprinkler. Yeah. And we're going to be educating our, our fire department, our fire prevention bureau. Like, here's this new product. Look at it. Check it out. Can we get it in our fire code? You know, can we have all of our houses have low cost sprinkler systems moving forward? Because right now it's it's kind of cost prohibitive. You're looking at for a typical house, 20 grand for a sprinkler system. That's too much. Yeah. You know, so um, so yeah, and the, and the other really cool thing that's happened and everything's fluid and the design's changing. And I'll say it's changing. As it gets built, it can't change anymore. So it's slowly solidifying as as everything comes together. 
But having the panels on each of the units, originally what we we're going to do is have shade cloths that cover the, um, the, the lanai so that it would be protected from the sun. But now we have solar panels running over it. And that to me is super cool because you now are directly interacting. You like have this direct relationship and it's not just that the solar panels giving you energy to live in air conditioning and have amenities. It's also blocking the sun from you, which in, you know, in, in central Maui is pretty intense. So that's an incredible thing too. How do we rethink these materials that are opaque, waterproof? Uh, you know, how can we be more efficient with that use? You yeah. Know? So uh, that that's that's really exciting component to it as well there's um it's uh, because we've done lots of different shows for many 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 years now i tend to think back to certain experts in time that that solved certain problems you know and uh, i can think of a couple that may be applicable but like w one thing when you have a central generation source and then you have distributed generation then you have this opportunity right uh it, it, you can kind of create better efficiency sometimes depending on how you connect those. So there's a, a company, a friend of mine, Ted Pack at Holo Ho. He uh, did some really interesting things in, in low to moderate income housing. And, 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 and then I started to see some of those data sets and that you found um, better efficiencies because you would, in a certain scenario where you might have a curtailment situation or a backfeeding situation where you get less value in, in that type of scenario, you can move energy over to another Hale and store, right? And then you get better efficiencies for the entire community as a whole, holistically. So you maybe maybe there's some opportunities there for for y'all there. Uh, in terms of the um, in terms of the the uh, airborne clay, uh, I was talking with the guys at Target, and they were trying to figure out how to get their their uh, arrays clean. And actually, the the main guy in Target across the country that was responsible for all the solar deployments. I met him in last year's RE Plus, and he said, whoa, the airborne clay in Kahului, which is right down the street from this community, is really tough to deal with. There's some new um, uh, technologies, companies that I know of that I'll share with you uh, that maybe that have um, coatings that can uh, that are hydrophobic and oleophobic and do a fantastic job, unprecedented really in the industry, to uh, prohibit uh, the, the airborne clay from adhering to the panel and then also minimizing the amount of time and water spent in, in, clean, in, in cleaning them off over the years, over the months, really. So that's something to take a look at. Maybe we can help out with that a little bit. Um, but yeah, so inspiring. So glad to hear about yeah, this. Send that my way. Send that yeah. my way as well. I'm going to get off we got this call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ring them. A uh, really cool group of guys from Australia. Please. Yeah. And we're going to talk story with them a little bit. I'm sure they'll be stoked to talk with you. And then, um, you know, there's just a, so much, uh, there's so much in what you've said, David and Eric, in terms of um, addressing this moment in time in the history of Hawaii and the world and thinking about how to be sensitive to the trauma that people have experienced, but also thinking about how to teach uh, or how for us all to be, learn from this new new opportunity to develop in a different way uh, in terms of water, in terms of energy, in terms of how we live and dealing with the passive, you know, the, the construction and the dealing with this, the, the heat of the sun, as you said. Uh, I was wondering about the DHW. I can't, can't get the key cat off on, you know. <laughs> What's the domestic hot water situation? Are you doing tanks? Are you on demand? Or how do you have it handled? Yeah, we're, we're working with our hot water, uh, solar hot water provider, and uh, they're actually going to be donating uh, large commercial tanks. So we've got lots of sun, and the, the idea is to just condense how many, how much equipment we're managing, maintaining, you know, operating. Uh, and by clustering all these together, uh, we're again putting the sort of solar hot water array on the south side of the community holly so that we stop that that low south sun coming in in our, our, our more winter months right. um and then we'll distribute it from there but that'll also allow us if we need to back it up with the larger energy system you know we can and we're not putting that tax on the individual units gotcha gotcha so you've got solar hot water panels and every electric backup where you'd have energy coming in from your your batteries or your solar directly as a, as a backup for whenever you need it so you have your dhw handled you have your uh, power uh, and energy handled uh and you have your, your your water and septic of course i think eric had mentioned to me you're tapping into a and b right so you've got uh, some lines there on that property is that correct we we won't be working with a and b on this one unfortunately okay. Uh, unfortunately. So, so, we love so what's to, the water and uh, septic game plan? 
So for, for the short term, uh, we, we have multiple strategies that we're working with. We're working with the county. The county's been great. The county has stepped up and, and said, how can we help you? They, they were sort of directly from the mayor's office was, yeah, we're going to support you. Right. You know, having a partner like Family Life that's already been, you know, working with the local and the state government uh, for trying to house folks that are in need, um, it was a no-brainer. So, yeah, the mayor's office, full support, and that's trickled down through the county. So we're working with the Department of Wastewater, uh, Department of Environmental Management, Department of Water Supply. Uh, we had reached out to uh, the neighboring uh, adjacent properties, hoping that that would be faster, working with the private sector. Um, no comment further on that one. Copy that. So. Copy that. So, so you've got you got the support, and then, but from a technical perspective, you've got some strategy ideas. Yeah. So, so the first one is is a what we would call a pump and dump, right? So we we put it into a holding tank, and then we 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 pump it out, uh, and we dispose of it in the wastewater system and or a private wastewater system that's designed for that. So Valley Isle pumping, Sal and uh, Don yep. Marino. Uh, Called them up, said, "Hey, here's what we need to do." And they said, "Yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do it for free." Uh, moving forward over a long period of time, it, it can't be for free, but uh, they threw that support in. They're helping us design the system, uh, and then beyond that, we're looking at uh, horizontal directional drilling and working with the Department of Transportation to get under the highway to to the, the closest sewer main, okay. uh, in which will take a little bit of time to do. It. We're looking at a temporary solution, which would be. Uh, running a, a forced main, a small two-inch forced main and a three-inch uh, protective uh, chase going through the stormwater drain to connect to that in the interim. Uh, so first, we're just going to go with the with the pump, you know, store and pump, and dispose of. Second will be potentially, you know, the chase through the storm drain uh, and or depending on how quick we can get the permitting and design for the horizontal directional drilling, uh, we'll just go under the highway connect to the sewer and we're good to go. And that's where we're looking at getting water too. In the interim, while we're working those things out, we are going to have a 30,000 gallon water tank on site. So that'll start to support our first structures. So yeah. what came on the first C-17 from NATO was 18 of the Continest units. So some of those will be doubled. 75% is, is going to be doubled because we're trying to house larger families, multi-generational families, ideally. Uh, and so we're going to support those with trucked water for the short term. Then that then that tank is then going to be used for specifically for firefighting. So if we lose pressure, we'll have the backup power from our renewables, and we'll have a generator uh, as a last you know last resort to provide pressurized water throughout the the water system uh, to be able to fight fires. Uh, and and again, not that we're anticipating that. It's more about giving those systems to people as a peace of mind, peace of mind, you know, making them feel sure. comfortable. So for sure. Wow. And then so, okay, so well, that handles septic and, and water. Of course, you know, it came to mind. I saw some posts the other day of a, of a couple of the atmospheric water generator companies floating around and providing some solutions. And then, of course, you know, in, a, in, a, in an off-grid, not this is a non-backfeeding and off-grid environment. So sometimes you're going to have extra power when you size things, right? At a given moment, you may have to curtail if you don't have the storage or the consumption, or you know, to, to utilize that. So it could be thrown over to an AWG. And uh, I can't help but I get excited about things like that. Is that is it, have you guys chatted about that at all? Well, I think we are going to uh, we're going to now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for bringing it, it, up. It, don't get me started on AWG, man. You know, it's uh, it's there, because in a world of abundant electrons, you know, this is kind of the mindset where you move out from this scarce mind, scarce scarce mentality, scarcity mentality of generate through fossil fuels, put them up on, put some poles in the ground, dead trees, run copper wire, send it over and then get charged a bunch of money for it. That world is, uh, is looking pretty pale to me at the moment. And in a world where you, 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 everyone has their own generation, their own storage, and they understand, as you said, people are looking at the energy curves and and becoming acquainted with energy again and and being connected to the idea. It's almost like being connected to nature because it all comes down to nature, right? So this, what's that term that um, 
uh, nature deficit disorder. That was <laughs> one of the, the terms back in the day, right? So getting moving past that, learning about the, na the natural environment around us, but then being able to take that extra energy and throw it into useful loads. And one of them could be atmospheric water generation, water generators. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's always a costing scenario, a capital deployment uh, issue. Uh, but, but you have free electrons, you might as well use them, you know? I think, I think uh, you know, going along with what you said, you know, when all of us got into this industry, we we started, you know, I remember when I, you know, my background is in construction. My partner, Josh Powell, is, is our RME. He's a general contractor and architect. We both have building backgrounds. And so it's been great talking with David and, you know, really like the first sketch, like we kind of envisioned, we're like, oh, we get it. Okay, let's go, you know, but, but when I first got into solar, the first day I walked into that solar company, 17 years ago, when I walked out, I never looked at a roof the same way again, right? I'm sure you guys didn't either. Every roof, you're like, they should have solar and they should have solar. <laughs> now, the same thing, and this is what's great about this project is that when it is being built out, when it's phase one and phase two, and when it's finally completed, because it's so, the proximity is on these two major thoroughways and they're going to have family coming and visiting. They're going to everyone is going to see this beautiful village that's powered by solar. And I know that no one has, you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of people, I see it on social media. I, I have the conversations with people that aren't in the industry. My friends, they're all looking around at our infrastructure and, and they it used to be blind, invisible, right? You just, we grew up with power lines. We grew up with power poles. You didn't even see them until you stopped to take a, a picture, right? Yeah. It was just invisible. Every conversation I have or every post that I see, it's just like, you can't not see it now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I think that, we, you know, this is a couple benefits, you know, Dave, Dave, David and his team are, are, this is all they do. And this is how they're, they're showing the example for the future. And the, the public is going to see it in real time, real action. Um, and then it just points to how amazing, you know, in terms of being able to accelerate this, this real solution, it's not a hotel, it's not um, an Airbnb. Um, this is a real this is the first that I know of real large scale solution. And of course it was accelerated because, because solar and because we could just deploy the, the electricity, you know, as these things go up, we're right there behind them, putting down the PV and storage. And um, so it's just yet another example of, of how powerful our industry is, the technology is and the people in it are. And it's just another example of how it needs to be moving forward. That's great, man. That's great. I, th I really agree with you. And as you said, when you first moved into the industry, you couldn't look at roofs the same. I remember feeling yeah. like I was in a constant, I was in like a perpetual Tetris game. I've never even said this sentence before, but it occurred to me when you said it, <laughs> I would just look at a roof and I'd be like, oh, it would be portrait or landscape. It'd be about nine here. It'd be about four on the other azimuth. And I, I would just do that in, uh, unconsciously, you know what I mean? And because uh, you just go, I do the same thing. Artist. And then my kids, my poor children, <laughs> right? My poor children grew up, you know, uh, having to go to every single, you know, in the in the early days when we were chucking when I was chucking panels on the roof. Yeah, they were right there alongside with me. 100%. You know, hundred percent. Um, so they do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, um I said the same thing about my daughter. She grew up like under the tables at the ag fair, you know, talk well, I was talking with clients. And then, you know, over the years, my 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 business partners are coming up be like, that kid knows a thing or two about solar. Let me tell you, she's been around it since she was, you know, a baby. Uh yeah. so yeah, really fortunate to be part of this energy revolution here. Now I know there's um, I want to say one more thing, if I may, about text, and we'll, we'll, tell, we'll move on just because I got to get it out. So one of the things that I play with is um, electrification of transportation here in my own home. And what I find really interesting is that the useful load of an EV does a, a fantastic job of, 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 of modulating loads to avoid curtailment. And there's very um, interesting movement in V to, v to H at, at the moment. Uh, a couple of companies come to mind right away, and, and I'm very close with both of them. 
um, have some on my home and the other ones I'm talking about some other projects with. So maybe there's some opportunities there, you know, that you could find a place where one of these car manufacturers says, we're going to, we're going to get some transportation options because people lost transportation that definitely happened. And it could be wonderful if one of these manufacturers st stepped in and said, Hey, we're willing to do that because not only would it provide transpo, which is huge. This is not a walking community Maui. It would be a little lovely if it was, we well, need a car to get around, but it also provides that useful load uh, to further uh, mitigate um, curtailment uh, for a very robust, you know, power uh, so solution, but then simultaneously potentially offering uh, uh, continue, uh, let's say redundant backup, right? V to H uh, vehicle to house loads. Uh, that could be something worth looking at. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay. Uh, I probably shouldn't get any more on the tech, but <laughs> so uh, I do, I know that you want to touch on uh, a couple of things here in terms of how the industry is forming, uh, like I'll use the term hooey, uh, a language that we're from to potentially deal with these uh, disasters forward. God forbid we find ourselves in similar situations in the near future because of what's happening with the climate. Uh, what What's going on in that space? Uh, Eric, you mentioned that briefly to me. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all fluid. Um, there are some organizations that already exist that do this, that, that are, that respond to natural disasters. Um, uh, and it's escaping my head right now, but we've worked closely with them. Um, mm -hmm. And they've been fantastic on Maui. David, uh, do you know, uh, Green? Gosh, I can't remember. Uh, local but organization they, here? They're, they're a national organization that responds to not, uh, uh, natural disasters by deploying solar uh, and battery resources um, instead of like your traditional. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. No and they have been absolutely incredible um, on Maui. And now they're busy, unfortunately, in Florida. Um, oh, and so, I mean. you know, what, what we've learned, what, you know, just we have the resources, we have the technology, we have the willpower. Um, it was just, a, we had a meeting the other day, um, just a couple heads of, of local companies uh, and some distributors just kind of getting together and just, just starting the conversation just to see where, you know, we're not sure where it'll go, but we feel that, um, you know, our role we have the technology as we've seen that it was a lot of people in the community coming together. It was the people that, let's be honest, it was the people uh, of Maui, of Molokai, of Oahu, of all the neighbor islands that came together and really provided that first immediate relief mm -hmm. to the people. And, you, you know, it, it's a huge wake up call that when something bad happens, you are on your own for a, a period of time. And, and we saw this 72 hour window where the local community just, and continues to, but immediately just jumped in. And so, yeah, we, we want to form a, a group of people that are all in to help out in the next, in, in the next uh, incident. And whether that be on Oahu, uh, Maui, um, you know, or, or wherever we want to find um, and create a, a group of leaders that are, that are willing to donate time, material, resources to the people on the ground. So if something were to happen on the big island, we call the local solar guys there and, and we say, what do you need? We're here to help. We can get you manpower. We can get you design. We can get you product, et cetera. And so and, and we'll see where it goes, but it has a lot of legs. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but that that um that concept uh that that was born out of the response of the solar industry to this particular this disaster, and I don't think we touched on that actually. I meant to touch on that, but we got so into the to the housing uh, solution that we're working on now. So how did the um, solar industry play a role in that immediate time frame? What what was learned? What was deployed? What was the uh, results? Yeah, so uh, footprint project. Um, Sun Run and Rising Sun are just three off the top of my head that were incredible. They created, you know, I think within the first 24 hours, um, just they banded together to, to just kind of do a re uh, a little, you know, inventory check to see what they had, what was deployable. Um, and then Footprint Project within the first 40 hours kind of came in and assessed the needs. Yeah. And then that's after that, that's when sun, the people of Sunrun 
uh, and rising sun started to build these mobile battery sleds that were, they were then able to, yeah, yeah, they were able to deploy to these pop-up community centers. Yeah. Um, and which were, they were able to, the technicians were able to troubleshoot the star, the Starlink to, they were the first to provide communications to the outside world, you know, um, was the sun run and rising sun and, and footprint guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, after a few days, a lot of the larger um, pop-up areas were running refrigeration units, multiple diesel generators. Um, people were getting, we heard reports that people were getting ill from all the carbon monoxide. Humes. So yeah. Um, so later they were able to provide storage and, and, and deploy large, uh, uh, really fast these buckets i forget the the product name i'll i'll we'll, we'll be talking again about yeah. everyone who offered help but these really quick ground mount solutions where you just there's these buckets and you shovel gravel in there and it's oh, balanced i, know those. I, know yeah. I didn't realize and those so, were used those are amazing yeah 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 that i think that place is called s turns um they have a pop-up hey, every there, time i so. see them i think oh that's smart it's like it's like basically yeah. it provides the ballast and the and the and the tilt yeah right it's a really yeah. smart solution yeah very cool so yeah so it was just it was just very quick you know and, and organic and just natural from just getting together seeing bandwidth checking in making sure everyone's okay footprint you know you know addressing where the need is and then them deploying and bringing back communications temporary power um and then permanent power in the form of off-grid solar arrays and, and power walls. So it's been amazing. It's uh it is so uh, inspiring to know that, that that came from the renewable energy industry and, and all the great people that we know and work with and and just you know resonate with out here in, in Maui. Maui's a really special place and it, and in Hawaii for that matter, right? And so I'm so glad to know that 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 it, the industry played a, a significant role in, in filling that period of time that people were hurting, you know, needed that. So, uh, gentlemen, we've covered some great ground today. I could probably talk with you all for uh, hours upon hours, <laughs> uh, but oh, I, I know yeah. we all have pressing schedules. So I wanted to make sure, I think we touched on the main points that we wanted to cover. I, I personally know I'm going to be doing a handful more shows about what's going on in Maui, about the, 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 the before, the during, the after, the plans for the, for the future. I think there's some really, um, I hope, there's some big changes coming to how we handle handle energy, how we handle development, how we handle water. Uh, I hope the, if I may be so bold as to say, I hope the disaster capitalists don't get any traction and that uh, the community is able to be really strong and emboldened out here. That's what I hope to see. So are there any final words, uh, David, well, before you wrap this up? Um, you know, I think that our industry and is mature now and we're, we're we're poised and we've we've established ourselves we're a little bit older a little bit grayer uh we're, we're leaders in our industry we're leaders in our community and the values in the industry are are on full display right now you yeah. know what eric was talking about and it's it's great to see all of it come together it's an unfortunate circumstance i think we are going to see more of this and we're going to learn how to, how to do this better, you know, as it happens again. And it unfortunately will, but, um, I'm just, I'm just proud to be part of the industry. I'm, uh, uh, uh Eric's my friend now, you know, we didn't know each other before and I, I feel very grateful for that. And, um, and to be able to share this, this message and to talk more. And I want to geek out with you more and talk about, you know, air to water. And, and we're going to have that with those air conditioning units, you know, we're going to, we're going to, yeah. collect that water you know so maybe there's other things there and, and if we can get some evs in there that's that's killer so it's just amazing the response the community coming together you know pe us taking care of each other uh, that doesn't mean that you know the, the federal and the state government aren't helpful in the county but it's, it's it takes the whole community and uh and, and it's just really nice to be a part of that and to have all the support for everybody yeah so just just thankful Thanks for that, David. Thank you for everything you do. How about you, Eric? Would you like to give us a, uh, a final word? Yeah, I, you know, uh, Josh, first, thank you. Um, you know, my my goal was reached. I wanted to get awareness about this pro project that David is working on. Um, so thank you for 
for doing a show about this. Um, and I echo everything that that David has said. Uh, it's just fantastic to be a part of this industry. Um, and we can all tell each other this all the time, but, but, it, you know, we need to get that message out, yeah. um, for public and, and, uh, you know, if anyone's listening, you know, we're still trying to make this happen. So, um, you know, we're setting up, we, you know, Revolution has been around for 15 years. We have a non-formal, it, it's called Project Empower, and that is our community giving program that we fund. Um, but this has inspired us to go and make it an official nonprofit um, uh, org. And so we will be using that, uh, the, 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 the mission of our, uh, of our nonprofit is going to be focused solely on, on getting people back into their homes uh, on Maui, um, using renewable energy, lowering the cost of their rebuild. So we're going to be reaching out, looking for, you know, to all manufacturers of appliances and solar components, et cetera. Um, and so anybody that wants to get involved, um, you know, reach out to Revolution. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn and and we'll we'll talk and and show you or give you ways to how you can help us um, help the people of Maui. Fantastic. Thank you for everything that you do, Eric, and to everybody at Revolution and to all the all the people in the industry that are listening uh, here in Hawaii and throughout the country. And I will say that, you know, um, the solar coaster is preparing for RE plus RE plus for the uninitiated is the largest convening event of renewable energies in the United States, potentially the world at this stage of the game. I'm here. It's tracking. I hear it from, executive team at sets that's tracking between 40 and 50,000 attendees this year. That's in about 10 days in Las Vegas. <clears throat> and uh, we have a main stage event with uh, public utilities, uh, former public utilities commissioner, uh, Jenny Potter, former energy commissioner, uh, Doug McLeod, uh, where we'll be talking about what's happened here in, in, in Maui and in Hawaii. Well, but uh, we're, we're going to be having an RE plus Hawaii in January of 24 at the Alohilani resort. So uh, what I hope to be able to do is communicate uh, through the, the, the conference uh, next week in Las Vegas, what you guys are doing and put a call out to the entire industry, which is in my opinion, one of the most exciting and, and powerful, you know, growing industries in the country, really it's, it's driving in some respects, the economy with the inflation reduction act, plus all the innovation uh, that's been happening. And then maybe we'll get some really interesting responses. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to bring in some, some new partners or maybe some new technology that can help or some new capital or some new talent or ideas or you know maybe this, this, uh, this wonderful little community that we've been privileged to witness come together to support Maui. Maybe we'll feel that as well from the rest of the industry across the country and the world. So I hope to be able to help with that. And I uh, really appreciate you gentlemen both. And uh, thank you so much for joining the Solar Coaster. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for the thanks for the opportunity. And if, if people do want to, uh, you know, learn more, ohanahopevillage.com uh, is the website that gives you information. And if they want to donate, that's an opportunity as well. So yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. This has been uh, the Solar Coaster pre RE Plus show talking about what's going on in Maui. We have David Sellers from Hawaii Off Grid uh, Architecture and Engineering and Eric Carlson from Revolution, the smart home guys out here doing amazing things. Thank you both. Have a wonderful uh, day ahead. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.